a lot of the dogmatic argumentation of the last hundred years has painted us into a couple of corners where our philosophical ways of explaining things have created barriers to other philosophical ways of explaining things so that what we should have stand together is actually set at odds, like your question. How can you be content and pursue excellence? As if, again, um, this is really just about some sort of philosophical, logical problem, and if we figure out the philosophy, we'll all be fine. Uh, it's more about faith. So, contentment is knowing in any given moment that what God has given you is good enough. That doesn't mean God doesn't say, go over here and do this next. It doesn't mean God hasn't given you stewardship over the garden and stewardship over the family and time isn't going to stop and the kids are going to grow and the plants are going to grow. So you're going to have to go and get your hands dirty at some point because it's just there. But contentment is not about not doing that or only doing it poorly. Contentment is simply an, a, a posture from where you begin that the result won't affect your relationship with your God and therefore your identity. Your result is not what makes you who you are. So, a contented person is content before they try in that regard. Now, am I actually content? <laughs> I'm working on it. Yeah. Um, uh, there's also something very beautiful about wanting to live, about the zeal and d drive that, that is just what it means to be a human. And, and this is from God, too. And so, the pursuit of... Uh, exploration, uh, the pursuit of art, uh, the pursuit of craft, excellence, all these things, these are why God made man. He, he, he hid within creation an endless panoply of toys uh, for man to perceive, play with, and craft into things that serve the good of all. That's excellence, right? Um, and so, you know, setting these two things up as if they're like polar opposites on a spectrum. Um, I don't think that works. But this is the way that I think real information works. So you don't have a spectrum, you have a triad or a semantic field. Um, and at the middle of that field is something very important. Uh, and I don't know what actually goes with this to make your current philosophical question make sense. But somewhere there's another idea that makes both contentment and excellence open up into a three-dimensional reality, uh, a three-dimensional semantic field, a, a way of understanding your present that isn't just either or and somewhere in between. The Holy Spirit is going to motivate you to speak. And if at the moment you're like, I don't feel motivated to speak, well then, read the Bible instead. Because <laughs> it, it won't be long before that Bible does not let you stay content with the evil. You will be content with God's answer to your prayers. You will be content with the result of your works. You will not be content with the devil running everything. You will not be content with the demons convincing everybody to worship them. You will not be content with the idolatry in your streets. You will not be content with the adultery around you. You will not be content with your children having like their livelihood stripped away from them by legalistic, tyrannical, faraway governments. You will not be content with false religions lifting up their name in the name of Jesus and saying that they really have Jesus and you don't. You will not be content with any of that because it's evil. You will be discontent with evil. But you will be content with your God and his answers to the evil. And that is not an either-or, that is a field you live in. Eh? I hope that helps. Be still and know that I am God means find the fire in your bones by reading the scriptures and then talk about it to somebody. <laughs> you know? Let it be. Let it be.